I'm not going to waste your time with a long intro. You're here because you want to have a technically sound two-handed backhand. In this video, I'm going to run you through all the checkpoints that you have to have for a great two-hander. So let's get started. Fundamental number one, the grip. Absolutely acceptable on the bottom hand grip, on your right hand grip, if you're a right hander, either continental or, yes, we're kind of allowing that now these days, an eastern forehand grip. How do you find the continental grip? You know it by now. Underside of the index finger knuckle and the heel pad of the palm want to be on bevel number two. So this is one and two. So that's where my bottom hand goes. For either of the grips, you want the left hand, or as a lefty, of course, your right hand, in an eastern forehand grip. So that means the underside of your index finger knuckle and the heel pad want to be directly behind the grip. So this time you have to go to the left. One, two, three on bevel number three. If you have your continental grip, this is what it looks like. If you have an eastern forehand grip on your bottom hand, this is what it looks like. The benefit of having a continental grip, and that's why I am predominantly teaching the continental grip on the bottom hand, is that it's much easier to stay in this grip and then let go of your two-handed backhand and hit a slice. It's easier to transition in if you hit a volley, and it's much easier to come right from a serve into your backhand grip. The benefit that you have if you have an eastern forehand grip that makes it easier in your ready position on your return to then switch immediately into a forehand grip. You take back, you turn, fundamental number two. On my take back, I want to get the racket head above my wrist and I want to turn so much that the right hip points towards the court and you could see my right shoulder blade. I'm almost touching my chin here onto my shoulder. Coming up here, and this is where you want to let gravity do the work. You're just letting this drop. Because from here on out, you're getting into your lock-in position and you're pulling up and forward to your contact point. The degree with which the racket here is closed, again, depends a little bit on your grip and also individual taste. Next step in your swing is the lock-in position. And what that means is that your butt cap points to the incoming ball. And that means that your preparation is done. You're having your swing here, you let your racket head drop, and from here on out, this is where you're accelerating up and forward to your contact point. Let's talk about what hand is doing what when, because that is a question that I'm getting a lot. Which hand is more dominant? So the way I'm teaching is your dominant hand facilitates, guides the take back. This here gauges how far I'm taking the racket back. On my forward swing, my left hand, my non-dominant hand, is more dominant, has more to do, initiates things, works harder. Whichever you want to say, right hand on the turn, left hand on the forward swing. Next step is from lock-in position to your contact point. Where should you make contact in terms of how far out sideways? So to my mind, you want to have the left wrist, if you are a right-hander, fairly close in front of your shoulder. So in terms of how far in front I want to hit the ball, I want to have my left arm fairly extended. Ideally, I do not want to be too close. Now, if you do have the forehand grip on your bottom hand grip, your swing shape will look probably a little different. If you have your continental grip, that allows you to extend a little bit more. So contact point out in front here, and you want to extend through the ball, through the ball, through the ball until your left arm is almost extended. You don't have to hyperextend it, don't hurt yourself, but you definitely do not want to do this here. Finish and follow through. As I said, you want to extend your non-dominant hand through until you can't go any further and only then are you breaking your elbow. Then you're coming around here and we call this the rhino nose. And what that means is that your arms finish high away from your face. And I do like to use two checkpoints. Butt cap, number one. Try that with little kids, they love it. Butt cap, number one. And then I can fall through 
all the way so that the butt cap points to the cord again. Butt caps! How do I space properly for my two-handed backhand? I'm gonna show you a drill in a second, but I wanna make sure that we all know what the outside leg is because I'm getting a lot of questions about that. The outside leg is the leg on the same side of your contact point. So if I'm a right-hander, it's gonna be my left leg. And I want to use my back leg, my outside leg, same thing, to gauge the distance and also then to step in to the ball. So how do I do that? What you're trying to do is you're placing your left foot in a way that the ball would almost graze your knee and or go between kind of chest and knee here. Because if your outside leg is not behind the ball, then you'll end up having to step across, which every now and then on very far balls, you're not going to be able to help that. But if it's a rally ball, I want to be do I have to be scared of this? Anyways, moving on. So little friend right here <laughs> on rally balls. I want to get behind the ball using my left leg, my outside leg, my back leg, and then I'm stepping into the shot. And on the two hander, I'm still very much a fan of the close stance because yeah, an open stance, that's going to be a specialty video. And as I said earlier, your left wrist, will be still somewhat in front of the shoulder. So this here is a last resort. I want to get my contact point right here. So let me show you the drill. E, probably a little too far away, so I needed to move more. Again, another thing that I can work with is my lock in position. So I'm not actually hitting the ball in this drill. I'm just getting into position. And then, of course, once I've done the repetitions a little bit, go ahead and hit them. Now, that covers all the fundamentals. If you want to jump into more details off the two-handed backhand, check out this video here, the three biggest two-handed backhand killers. And I'm going to see you on this channel here again very soon.